In a previous video, I mentioned that I'd been asked to make the hard drive image for my Atari-based ST emulator available to you guys. I promised that at some point in the future I would do that, and that day has come. Today I'm going to do a, a whistle top tour through how to install and configure Hatari and set up the hard drive image and obviously where to get it. So you can follow along at home if you want to. So this is a Mac, which is what I use. This is actually a virtual machine running on my Mac. So it's as clean as clean can be. The only thing I've done is I have set up three bookmarks just to make this thing go a little easier. Let's get going. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to get Hatari, then we're going to get the latest version of Emutos, and then we're going to get the hard drive image and we're going to get to configuring. So Hatari download page, I'll put links to these into the descriptions. We go to the download area, we go to the latest version, which as of this video is 2.4.1, and then we download the Mac version. Okay, and straight away, I'm just going to install that. Installation couldn't be any easier. We just drag Atari to our applications folder and we're done. And perhaps for ease of use in the future, we'll put that into our. That'll do. We'll put it in there so we can get to it. Right, so that's Atari installed, but not configured, obviously. Atari by default comes with uh, Emutos version 1.1.1. Well, I want to update to the very latest version, which is. 1.2.1. There are different versions of this available depending on how you want to actually deploy it. There's different sizes available. And I believe this is my understanding, and it's a long time since I read about this, but the sweet spot for me was a 5.1.12k ROM. It has all of the functionalities, but it has a separate ROM file for each language. I think the larger one might have multiple. I don't know. But I use this one and that's why, you know, if you if, literally, if you want to echo what I'm doing, then that's what you should use. Uh, yes, please download. So a little bit of uh, infrastructure, maybe. So we need somewhere to put this on my machine, go to my desktop, call it Atari. And these instructions, while they're specific to the Mac, should work on Windows or on Linux. The installation mechanism might be different on Linux. It might be a apt install rather than drag and drop, but it should be fairly similar. And if you do want me to do videos on installing and configuring for those different environments, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So we're going to want to put stuff into here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new folder. We're going to have a folder for our ROM, which we've just downloaded. We're going to have a folder for our hard drive image. And we're going to have a folder for our Gemdos image. Gemdos image is going to be the D drive that we set. And the reason I'm creating a D drive, I'll cover in a little bit. Gemdos. And in there, I'm going to create a single folder, call it D. And that will become our D drive. We could also, by the way, you could put an E and an F and a G in there if you want that. So that's our structure. So let's get our ROM from the downloads folder, which is in there. You can say there are different versions according to different languages. I want the English version for the UK. Where are we? Where is UK? There it is, right at the bottom. How inconvenient. UK. Your language and your POS ROM may vary, will vary. Should vary depending on your native language. We've got Atari, we've got the ROM. Now let's get the installation program. Let's sorry, let's get the hard drive image. Now I've stored the images on my old blog. Uh, there's a little bit of preamble because it's a blog, you have to write words. And then I've just put the images up for the last episode as of the time of recording this, which was the You're So Pretty one where we put some nice icons in. And then I've Put the last couple of snapshots up there. My intention is to keep a little rolling window of them. So, you know, you might want to go back to a particular point if you want to experiment with doing the installs or the top one will always just be the latest version. So let's download that. And that goes into downloads. Now this will automatically extract it because it's a Mac 
it's trying to be clever the only thing is that i can't show you how small it was when it was compressed but they come out to be about 20 to 30 megabytes depending on the version and obviously that will grow but they're not massive files by any means in fact even at 512 it's going to be tiny it's an interesting question what i'm going to do when i actually fill that hard drive up but oh, that's a problem for a later video now we've done everything we need to download now we need to get into atari and configure it You'll note while well, it's loading, it's on Emutos version 1.1.1. It's also in color. Change all of these. Because we're strictly monochrome on this channel. A uh, little delay loading here, and that's because it's checking the floppy drive to see if there's a floppy drive in there because we don't have hard drive boot yet. So pressing F12 to go into the Hatari settings, let's start wandering around this UI and setting things up. So for system, I have an ST plain st not an ste yet why is that because the ste has a blitter obviously it would be better is i only had an st the reason i have this atari virtual machine if i'm being really honest is it's not for the video series you're seeing here it's for the fact that i i install and configure software on my big boys hard drive image and then i transfer that across to my physical atari st my st does have four mega memory so i'm going to give myself four megabytes of memory Go back to the main menu. CPU is stock. It's a 68,008 megahertz. I would love to be able to update one of my machines to have a 16 megahertz processor one of these days. I've found a device that I think is going to work for me. It's just a case of getting around to doing it and obviously saving up the money. Right. What's next? ROM. So we've put our Atari ROM on the desktop in our Atari folder. So let's just go up to the root, come back down to my user, and then let's go to desktop. Yeah, please, Atari. Wrong. And we're going to use that image. Now, notice there where the Mac has for permission to access the folder. There is a bug in the system somewhere that after you get a Mac OS update, Atari often fails saying it can't find the ROM. And then you go and you reset the location of the ROM and it all works fine. And I think it's something to do with that permission dialogue being reset, but Atari not knowing that. I don't know. It's it's workaroundable, as they say. So next we want to set our video. I'm a productivity guy, so I tend to use mono. There are all sorts of weird and wonderful graphics modes that you can set, and we will be talking about that in a future video. The Atari screen, I tend to not want this status bar. I'm going to have no status bar. Everything else is stock. Right. Hard drives. <laughs> the very purpose of the video. So again, we need to go and pick up our uh, desktop Atari hard drive. So that is going to mount the image that we've downloaded from my blog site as the C drive, which is what we want. And then we're going to set up that GDOS drive to be our D drive. So we're going to browse to that. And that is in here. So leave the folder at the GEMDOS level, and then it'll pick up any subfolders like name D, E, and F as separate drives. Okay. We want to add our partitions after the SCSI and ASCII ASC, ACSI drives and we want to boot from our hard drive so anything left here we've done our gdos drive we've done our hard drive we've done our memory we've set the video mode no i think we're good to go so what i'm going to do now is save my config this is the default config in the default location i'm just going to accept that I say okay and then it's going to tell me that we need to reboot and hopefully I don't believe I've gotten it all right in a single run through. There's about to be something wrong with it. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Right. So first of all, we are in monochrome, which is good. I'm going to double click the productivity set to boot it. You could press Control Q at that point and it would boot it to Geneva NeoDesk Desktop. So this is the desktop as it was at the end of my last video, which was 
at this time the you're so pretty episode where i added all these icons and made everything look smart i mean there's not a great deal on this virtual machine at the moment so don't get too excited there's a couple of low res games on here but no high res ones high res games i might cover i will say this i am not a gamer but i like some distractions i'd like a ma young i'd like a tetris maybe a few others so we might do an episode on that but there we go i mean that is the image downloaded installed configured done links to everything in the description below but that's all for now thanks for watching and i'll talk to you soon